All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Hurley Investments Market View Commentary for Monday evening. Our year is quickly coming to an end. But with that said, what a wild day today. Can anyone tell me what's happening today in general or in our news that ran our markets today? It was definitely a wild, wild day. Anyone, someone tell me something, tell me something exciting. Ooh, we had a melt up. Well, kind of, but not really. But what, there, there are a couple specific things that have happened today. <laughs> no idea. Powell's passing. All right. So that was interesting. And it's going to sound bad, but in all honesty, General Powell uh, passed away. I don't know if that affected the markets, but uh, definitely he did do a lot of good. Uh, I was a little disappointed in him at the end of his political stint, but um, that did happen today. Something that uh, really hurt us at the open, China tested a ballistic missile. So all of a sudden today we found out that, uh, that, hey, China has the ability to launch a nuclear weapon using our technology up into the atmosphere and then back down on us. Which, why is this important? Because now we have a better chance of getting, and this is quote unquote from Fox News, blown away as we try to protect Taiwan. I know that's bad spelling. Let's try to get the spelling correct. There we go. Quote unquote, right from Fox News. Anything else happen today that we should know about? Good question, Maude. I'm going to go over that in a second. <laughs> yes. Chanos is betting against uh, IBM and a Barclays downgrade hit Disney by, what, 3%? Anything else happen today? <laughs> Very good. I love it, William. And William, that shows you've gone through an education. Industrial production came in at negative 1.3%, estimated to be a positive 0.3%. Which means, yes, we have a definite supply crunch that has significantly affected industrial production. And, uh, and uh, the long story is, we're getting hit by it. So for crying out loud, what moved our markets today? <laughs> yes, but that was announced last week. Uh, 
gym supply storage to go on for two years. I've got a very interesting article I think I either had last week or there it is. Global chip storage may persist for two more years, says China. So, yes, that was actually last week, though, but good thing to, to notice. Any other ideas? <laughs> uh, the reality is, Keeve and I talked a lot today. We were on the phone. We were back and forth. There you go. I was waiting for that to come on. The Apple event to show the new products for Christmas. And that's always a buy the rumor, sell the news type of thing, right? I wonder if it was today. Out of curiosity today, market close. Apple is up $1.71. So actually, that's, that's a first. So it's interesting because, in all honesty, it was difficult for us to justify why our market was up. In fact, if we didn't wait for the first hour to go by to see if it was just an overreaction for the uh, the closing of the, the futures on the S&P futures, we would have been in some, some trouble. But we were up as early as 6 o'clock. Saw the futures, looked kind of bad, and progressively from 6 a.m. in the morning, the hour and a half before the market opened, the futures got better. Market opened, big drop, and the market got relatively better as we went through the day. So as Keith and I are talking basically every hour, I think, and our best guess is taking a look at the technicals. What do you see that's changed today? What do you see if you look at these technicals? What's changing in a week with the technicals? And yes, this is the Dow. The Dow is basically down today due to Disney. Well, it's not overbought. In fact, it's kind of a ways from overbought, unless you're looking at the Williams percent R. But in one week, we changed bullish. And we bounced above the S and the 50-day simple moving average. Today, we saw what I would call follow through on a 50 day above the 50 day simple moving average. Now, on our third day, held the pivot point. Yes, it was down a little bit today, but we are seeing technical buying on an institutional level as you see us pass back above the 50-day simple moving average in a week's period of time. Look at the S&P. We just barely got above it last Thursday. Now I'm just going to take a pen right here. Barely got above it last Thursday. Friday, we bounced above it. Follow through today. Holding the medium pivot point right there. Pretty amazing, but S&P 500, now technically bullish. And follow through for a 500-day simple moving average. 
bounce. This is all technical. All these sale orders that were put as it crossed below the 50 day, a whole bunch of new ones came in after that. And what's amazing is what was not able to be held roughly a month ago, all those as it went below and this selling that occurred right here, all that money is to be put back to work when we bounce back above the 50-day simple moving average. This is, as of right now, a technical bounce. It's supply and demand. If we go through the NASDAQ, bullish with the same technical bounce above the 50-day simple moving average. When I see this technical bounce, and I better put that back up in our notes. So today, we can justify the move higher as a crossing above the 50-day simple moving average. Technical bounce. For me, this gives me hope, technical justification, and still fundamental justification other than industrial production for a Christmas rally. Our Christmas rally will really be based upon what we're going to see coming to us in the near future. And I'm going to take a little different play on that as well. Earnings guidance, right, is going to be filled with what? What is earning guidance going to be filled with? In the next three months, what? What are, was it going to be filled with? Uh, comparisons, yes, but there's a particular one I'm looking for. Earnings guidance is going to be filled with, and there's a particular comparison that we're going to need. Right? Earnings guidance is going to be filled with, <laughs> and both of you, but. That's two of you that said comparisons, and you both came with guidance. What's going to be in that guidance is going to be mentioned. There you go. That's kind of funny because you said it both. Well, one of you said it one way. Shortages and bottlenecks or supplies. Right? They're all sitting out there in the ocean. I noticed we talked about this eight weeks ago. That was in California, 12 ships turned into 18, turned into 24, and I think there are 28 the last day I left. So 12 big container ships were sitting off of the Long Beach port that I could see at the north end of Huntington Beach, just sitting out there in the ocean. Earnings guidance is going to be filled with shortages and bottlenecks for supplies. Will they have enough to make their products? Apple right now, a 10 to 12 week backlog for the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Their most margin, their best uh, selling item that they thought they'd have is a 10 to 12 week backlog. For just the Pro, you're going to look at what a four to eight week backlog. For just the 13, it's normal, uh, two to four weeks. Anything that's previous than that, they have it on hand, you can get it. 
So earnings ads can be filled with shortages and bottlenecks for supplies. Does that mean that companies can't sell their products? What do you think? There you go. Of course not. Right. Companies will definitely be able to sell their products. In fact, most likely, we will see products go quickly for higher prices and there will be a shortage. So companies are going to sell everything they have. Not necessarily a bad thing for the companies, right? So for the companies, we should be able to do pretty good. They might even be able to sell more. We might see more buying after Christmas than before. And something else that I'm still expecting, higher interest rates into the beginning of next year. What does that equal? Lower returns and pricing for currently held bonds. So where does bond money move to? When interest rates go up, it moves over to the stock market. And when you see higher interest rates, the current bonds lose value really quickly. People are stuck in them. You always will hear uh, someone like me, a broker, will tell you, well, you don't lose money if you don't sell it. But no one likes being stuck in a 30-year bond for one and seven-eighths of a percent return. When five years from now, they might be back up to three to six. Do you think the U.S. government's going to call a cheaper interest rate bond over a more expensive one that they're paying? Of course not. So you're going to be people see people stuck in these bonds which a bank will now buy up cheaper because they'll get their money, you know, the $100 that you paid for it when it's only worth 92 and they'll get their interest and they can borrow against it as if it's cash. So to see a shift out of bonds into the stock market. Today was an unusual day. Uh, I can't tell you, as I was looking at today, right? <laughs> I can't tell you how excited I was. Love seeing Disney come back above 171 and seeing Baidu trade higher than 171. Once again, it might be awful, but I would love to see our catch up and the stock market happen this year on one or two stocks, primarily Disney and Baidu. And man, we can catch up to the market, if not beat the market with those two positions alone. It will be interesting to see where we end up. It's funny because I do have one individual that keeps letting me know, well, you're not where you said you're gonna be. I know. But the neat thing is being able to double portfolio every four and a half, five and a half years, it might happen on that five year last month mark and it might be a 40 or 50% return. 
So we're just gonna keep plugging away, lowering cost basis, adding shares where we can. What a nice bounce we had. Um, I think it's time to get some more money back into Baidu. It'll be interesting to see how we run those positions coming into the near future here. Uh, what did we do today? Uh, nothing other than roll down a short put on on Boeing for, for a break even. We're gonna run that position. We're actually gonna run a bear put um, strategy through earnings on Boeing. That's our expectation there. All right, here we go. Let's see the big picture. Really, I would suggest you go through some of this. It's an excellent article on, on inflation. And uh, someone also sent me a very interesting, we call it the rant and we love the guy, but the rant is basically this for the last week. The rant is, and I don't know his name to give it to you. And that's our nickname for these emails that he sends out. But uh, a gentleman that is in the uh, uh, money management industry like me sends out these emails. And the rant last week was this, that uh, the middle class is screwed. The middle class is now stuck in a home that no one can afford to buy that they should be refinancing and taking money out to use, that they are trying to find better work and obviously not getting to it, and all the money that they've got in taking early tax returns that will go against their tax return uh, this year that we have to pay next April, uh, that they're screwed, that they're going to have higher inflation. All the money that they've gotten back in these child tax credit checks are going to be spent and used for higher fuel and higher food. And then they're going to get hit with a kick in the butt tax bill because they took those child tax credits early. So their tax bill will be significantly higher come next April. Uh, I love the guy. It, it's funny. As a money manager, all he does is bitch and moan about anything he doesn't like that happened the previous week. Um, Bill and I kind of have a little chuckle on it because we'll kind of say, well, what the hell is he going to do about it? And not only that, he's put people in these 40, 60, 40% 40 bonds that they're going to be stuck in. Um, these funds that they're, you know, they've done so good for the last 10 years. And he'll be the guy that loses 60% in the next two to four years, and his business will go under. Do read this article on inflation. Inflation is coming. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to be hyperinflation, but we don't know. All I'm going to say is I'm glad I refinanced my house. Went from a 30-year down to a 20-year, shaved a couple of years off of it. And came down, oh, almost four, that's not true, almost three percentage points in my interest rate. Uh, yes, I had an arm. I had an arm that I got into that I had till 2024. And boy, 2024, if I hadn't had this refinanced, no joke, I, I would have been paying interest rate. I think my interest rate could have gone up as high as uh, 9%, almost 9%, maybe 8 and 7 eighths of a percent, which would have been ridiculous. Thank goodness I could finally get qualified as a small business owner to redo it. But do take a look at this article. Really good on inflation, the rate of inflation, what's going to get hit, what's already high inflation, and it's going to give you an idea of where we might be heading into the future. But short answer for crying out loud, go um, <laughs> go get your house refinanced if you're looking to. Don't let it all pass you by. Um, 
market recap. Don't hesitate to go through here. Only thing I kind of felt was interesting is the large percentage returns for last week were materials, consumer discretionary, and real estate, and then technology. So it's interesting because, again, we heard just two to four weeks ago, you know, technology is dead. And four weeks later, it's the highest rising sector up 2.6% in a week. And it's true, this hasn't been, you know, this was our best week since July. But for technology to be dead four weeks ago, and then for technology to be up, 2.6% in a single week, I don't see that it's dead. And some of you made the comment last week, well, isn't it going to be hard in technology to make money? Isn't technology not where we need it to be? And again, I go back down to fundamentals. I go down to fundamentals that uh, they have money, they have tons of money, a lot of technology is going to be fine going into next year with a shortage. So they've already purchased their materials, already purchased their chips, already have them. And in all honesty, if you wanted to be, uh, if you wanted to be in the best technology, it's probably Apple. Apple is doing a better job than anyone controlling their uplines and downlines for their supplies for their products. Not only that, Apple and Disney, the two that are working on the services. Disney uh, services are the movies. Movies are coming back into play. Uh, their downgrade today was that they're not going to build Disney Plus as quickly as they thought because their content doesn't match Apple's and doesn't match Peacock's and uh, Netflix. We'll see, Netflix is coming up uh, tomorrow. Someone asked me today, what do you think about Netflix? Personally, I am not a fan of Netflix. I don't see Netflix as being a fundamentally sound company. They're expensive. Anytime you have debt to equity, and I know they did a big, you know, buy this year to to get more content. But every time that you pay a dollar thirteen for every dollar you use, I don't think it's sustainable. It's just not there. A PE ratio of sixty seven point four eight. You've got to be kidding me. You've absolutely got to be kidding me. Their profit margins look good. Not going to knock it. But the numbers are not sustainable. It's just like Tesla. What I have loved to have been in Netflix this year down at 480 and rented up to 639. Yeah. <laughs> uh, short answer is yes, definitely. But there's no justification for it. There is nothing I could have told you guys that, hey, I'm in Netflix because of this or that. My whole justification for Netflix would have been, we're going to gamble. We're going to gamble. And you guys, again, you've heard me say it numerous times. No one here has hired me to gamble with their money. No one wants to see Keith and I gamble your money. That's why we're not Netflix. Uh, someone asked me some of the comments, if I'd be in it or not, what I thought. Uh, I gave them my two cents. 
I really hope it goes down big tomorrow so that I'm proven right. <laughs> but uh, again, Netflix is a gamble. It's not something you typically would get into if you're doing prudent investing. It's a gamble. All right, let's see what else we have. Um, here are the earnings. And some of the earnings have changed. Let me update you on these. I probably should have already done it, but I forgot. All right, Boeing is on the 27th uh, before the market opens. Bank of America is done. Baidu is still estimated on the 16th. Disney is on the 10th after the market closes. Ford's there. Facebook is on the 25th after the market closes. JP Morgan is done. Costco's there. Square is in there at the fourth market close. Starbucks, Target, 17th, Under Armour, Visa is now the 26th after the market closes. And I put Micron in here because I forgot it last time. And it is 12.22 after the market closes. So those are the earnings really coming into this week. Um, the only major earnings that we're following is going to be uh, Verizon. Verizon will give us an update on Disney. It'll kind of give us an idea where we could see Apple into the future. But Verizon's the one that we're going to follow heavily this week. Uh, and I'm going to take that back. I said only Verizon, but we're also going to follow American Express and Discover Financial Services. Discover Financial Services is on Wednesday. In fact, I might as well just go to those. I'm talking about them. Uh, Zions was today at First uh, National Bank. Tuesday, Halliburton, J and J, Philip Moore, Philip Morris, Procter and Gamble, Netflix, uh, United Airlines, Intuitive Surgical. Wednesday, Abbott, First Horizon National, Winnebago, CSX, Discover Financial Services. We'll be paying attention to that on Wednesday. Help us see where we might see um, where we might see Visa. IBM reports, Kinder Morgan reports. Someone asked me recently about Kinder Morgan. Hey, is that a good play? Would you put some more money into it? I would not be putting more money into Kinder Morgan. Uh, Kinder Morgan is transportation, but uh, we blew our transportation and the need for that type of transportation by uh, not having the pipeline. In fact, let me go ahead and bring you guys into Kinder Morgan really quickly. Ridiculously cheap from where it's been. Energy, oil and gas. Um, we blew it. We're not looking at being energy independent. Because of that, we're basically shipping those opportunities and profits overseas. Uh, this administration is giving it back towards OPEC. But Kevin, higher gas prices mean we should be doing better with all uh, XLM, right? With all due respect, ExxonMobil price is at 62, is not back up to the 120s. I'm not really impressed with it. If we put uh, Chevron in there, not impressed with Chevron either. It really hasn't taken advantage of the uh, higher gas prices. Really, you're gonna be looking for some of these smaller ones like Bolero. That will be one that you'll see take off because it doesn't do, well, it does refining, but it does more of its refining overseas. You're looking for gas that doesn't do refining. Murphy oil might be an interesting one. Boy, this one has gone from 12 to 28 this year. Uh, marathon oil. Trying to break out 159 from 120 to 159 right now. Um, Phillips 
66. I don't know that one. I don't trade it actively. Philip 66. I don't know what it is. But that's where I would be looking for opportunities in the energy. Um, Thursday, AT&T. Uh, Alaska Airlines, Crocs, FCX, which is Newmont. That might be an interesting play for materials. Uh, KeyBank, Nucor. Uh, Love is Southwest, UNP, there's a Buffett, United Pacific, Bolero, Sam Adams reports on Thursday, CME, Intel. I don't think we have a good run on Intel. Uh, they're just in, in trouble. Let's face it, they're just in trouble. Snap, uh, Whirlpool, Friday, uh, AXP, which is American Express. I uh, forgot what ALV is. Honeywell, Slumberger. And VF Corp. Economic reports, not a whole lot going on. The big day was today capacity utilization, industrial production, building permits, and housing starts are probably going to be down, but the demand is still there. People just can't afford these newer homes right now. Initial claims, student claims, existing home sales, living indicators on Thursday were basically free on Friday. Free on Friday is we're going to look at a uh, Really busy earnings week coming out next week. Next week and the week after, basically it's half of the S&P 500. Not quite half, but just close to it. 275 to 286 of the... Actually, it is over that. Uh, over half of the S&P 500 reports, not this week, but next week and the week after. All right. Uh, Still think October is going to be down 2.5%. Haven't changed my thinking just yet. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Kramer says he'll sell half of his Ether holdings today as you have the Bitcoin ETF. Uh, just interesting that you're seeing a lot of people looking to take money off the table. Has not happened yet with Bitcoin. Uh, companies with pricing power are great plays at a high as inflation hits. I agree 100%. This actually might move Coke above $55, $56. I think that helps Apple. I think that helps Disney. As we go through, Ford, that'll help. Facebook, it'll help. Under Armour, it'll help. Visa, it'll help. Our banks, it'll help. Again, I really like where we're sitting. This is the position I want to be in. Great article to read up on it. They've got some others that are here that you might see that I maybe don't agree with. But yes, pricing power is usually helpful in a high inflationary market. All right, what else are we doing? Uh, the global chip shortage may persist for at least two more years, says China. Hopefully it uh, <laughs> it's for them that extends the next two years, but it will be interesting to see where we end up. Uh, someone asked me to find the uh, the numbers that I spoke on JP Morgan. So here's JP Morgan's numbers again. Pretty interesting because as I told you, they had their earnings. It might be a week or two and then they'll come up. Taking a quick look at JP Morgan's chart, all the way down to 160 and they're back up to 166.50 today. Um, they're doing a good job of coming back because... Their earnings were fabulous. 374 versus three dollars. Revenue was a billion and a half higher at 3044 versus 2980. 800, excuse me. Um, please read through this. This is why we didn't throw the talent on JP Morgan. We're okay where we're at because their earnings justify a higher price. For those of you that weren't into uh, Apple's announcements today. I got it for you right here. Here's all of what Apple's doing with their new MacBooks, AirPods, the whole nine yards. It's all right here. And I actually brought up the fact that Disney is delaying their movies right now. Out of curiosity, is this a good thing or a bad thing? What are your thoughts? If you see Disney delaying their movie releases farther out in the next year, what do you think? 
good, bad, and different? Is this a smart idea? Is it not a smart idea? What do you think? What do you guys think? Not a smart idea. William, why? Why is it not a smart idea? And I know you're overseas in what, United Kingdom, whatever. So why is it not a smart idea? Anyone else? Ooh, Mon, I really like it. Maybe smartest people get more comfortable going back to the theaters. And Bill puts a couple of question marks in, you don't know. Um, I'm going to agree with Maude. We've just had our third week where we have over $100 million being taken in by movie theaters. No way we're going to get to the $5.8 billion high side. Back in the day, for crying out loud, we had one movie themselves that was taking in over a hundred million dollars over a weekend read this article this article talks about how they're going to be pushing things back and the numbers that are most important to you for three weeks in a row we're just barely breaking a hundred million dollars in movie sales Why not wait till you can get your audience back? Bad news is, Bill, you might want to tell someone, now's the time to sell AMC. AMC is nowhere close to making back the money they made two, three years ago. And there's a better likelihood that AMC is going to go bankrupt before they can make a profit. Yeah, that they paid off $35 million in debt and they spent $25 million on social media and $35 million in getting oh, Nicole Kidman to act like she's in a movie and soda and popcorn just pop up in front of her. She's having a good time. Um, the numbers don't show it. The numbers show that we're more likely to go skiing and get outdoors than we are to go hit a movie theater. So I like it. I like the idea that, that Disney is turning, is creating the thought process that you know what? Let's wait it out. Let's let some things settle. Let's let people get more comfortable, get more vaccinated, get themselves out to the movie theaters in better time. So that's where I think, in all honesty, they're probably doing a really good idea of what they see and why they're doing it. I'm on board with it. So with that said, questions. What questions do you guys have that I could do my best to answer for you? on what's going on with your portfolio, what's going on with the stock market, and what we see coming up in the near future. Let me give you guys a second to ask any questions that you have. <laughs> and William, I knew you were gonna ask that. William actually sent this in an email and said, Kevin, are you interested in any of the European stocks or indexes to put into portfolios? And that's coming from someone that lives over in the UK, right, United Kingdom. Uh, uh, William, with all due respect, I think the, the U.S. market and the U.S. economy are global leaders right now. And with that said, it seems like with COVID rearing its head back there with you guys overseas and how bad it is in Europe, especially in the U.K., um, I am not so much interested in putting that money overseas as I am keeping it here and playing our economy over, over yours or the European economy in general. That does not mean that there are not opportunities overseas. 
what it means is I'm not willing to work to try to go find those opportunities because I don't think one boat can ride against the, the tides. Tides rise all boats, they sink all boats. And in a sinking tidal market like you have overseas, I don't have the incentive or the understanding of why I'd try to find that one ship that might beat the tide on the way out because it doesn't look good over there. So great question and to bash on your country and your stock markets over there, hell no. <laughs> Any other questions you guys have? Poor William rips me a new one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and no, I will not say what you just wrote to me, but you hired me to be honest and do a good job with your money, right? So I'm just, uh, I'm calling it how it is, sir. <laughs> and thank you. I know, I know we spoke about this. That's a good question though to bring up for everyone. And to credit to William, William wanted to see if I'd say the same thing twice in an open forum with other people here. And uh, not only did I say it, but I really gave it to you there. All right, any other questions you guys have? <laughs> All right, guys, hey, with that said, I appreciate you being here. Uh, update on Kiev. Kiev is doing quite a bit better. And, um, and we should expect to maybe hear him back on Thursday. And with that said, Ida, um, I would take Square over PayPal any day of the week because it has more opportunity. In fact, last Thursday, I showed some opportunities that people could put into accounts uh, under Square. And I think we're ready to put them into a couple other accounts ourselves, to be honest with you. So I would take Square over PayPal. No questions asked, only because it has more upside potential from where it's been than I see in PayPal. But I haven't done a good study on PayPal. I've only done my study, my research more so on Square. All right, any other questions you guys have? Let me give you a couple more seconds as I continue to talk. Uh, big earnings week next week. We'll make sure we have all of our positions on and ready in regards to having those ready to go. Um, if anything is being transferred, we'll make sure we have the protection on for those transfers as they occur. So just thinking out loud here so we can make sure that we're we're doing these as quickly as possible and that we have uh, the ability to look and make changes or adjustments as we see fit. Guys, have a good evening. Pleasure being with you tonight. Look forward to seeing you on Thursday, and we'll try to see if we can't have Keeve back. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.